Good evening, Wrightsville. Donna Pinkney here with your Thursday evening devotion. On the Thursdays in October, we have been talking about our Vision 2020 focus of generosity and giving. And on some of those Thursday evenings, I have brought a friend along. Tonight, I have also brought a friend along. Tonight, you will meet Dick Morrison. He's known to many of you already. But Dick is the chair of our finance committee. And so tonight, he's going to talk to you a little bit about his perspective on giving at Wrightsville. So ladies and gentlemen, Dick Morrison. Hello, fellow members of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. My name is Richard Morrison, Dick Morrison, and I'm very happy to have this opportunity to speak with you on this occasion today. As all of you know, our church is continuing to follow the Vision 2020 throughout this year, and each month we've had a different theme. In October, it's been the theme of giving. Now, we've had several people already to talk, and you've probably listened to all of them, and um, I, I think they all, I listened to all, and they did a wonderful job. I think about what Jim Busby said. He said that giving to the church is a very personal thing, and Jim is right. I agree with him. It is a personal thing. But then Jim went on and he said, we must give to and through our church in order to make sure that our church can survive financially and grow financially, but also to reach out to the community, to those in need. And then I think of Tom Barber, who basically said a lot of the same thing, but he also then said, it's not just supporting our church by giving to and through the church, but it also means that we can reach beyond the community, that we can reach out to the far corners of the earth. This was a command that we all had, and we know that there are desperate needs in other countries around the world. Others spoke, and I won't take the time to remind what they said. However, every speaker has said that the one common thing that happens if you are a generous giver to the church and through the church it does bring us closer to God. I'd like to start my comments very quickly by saying, as chairman of the Church Finance Committee, I want to thank our congregation for their generosity in terms of giving. I've been on the Finance Committee now for several years, and I think back to two, the year 2008 when I was on the committee and I was asked to chair the building committee for the new fellowship hall. And I agreed to do that. And at about the very same time as we were starting our fundraising, we were hit with one of the worst uh, disasters, financial disasters, recessions in this nation. And Wrightsville was not an exception to that. But through the generosity of our, our congregation and with one or two special donors, we were able to build the fellowship hall and pay it off in record time. So I, I think that is something that is wonderful and I just want to thank the congregation for that. And this year, of course, we're living in a pandemic, uh, a, a very difficult situation for all of us. And yet our, our congregation, everyone is continuing to give. And on behalf of the Finance Committee, I just want to say thank you. Uh, Okay, we have a couple of shortfalls every now and then, but it's not that bad. We're doing pretty good. And that's because of the generosity of our congregation. So let me now share with you one or two of my philosophies, one or two of my thoughts when it relates to giving. My wife, Belinda, and I married 63 years ago, tomorrow actually. And um, we were at university. We didn't have much money. We went to church regularly. We tried to tithe, but I'll be honest, it was very difficult in times we just simply couldn't. Today, it's much easier for us. Over the years, it became much more easier because of our status in life and so on. But throughout all of that time, we have always had the philosophy that we should give to the church and through the church to support needed, uh, needy organizations. And through our church right here, um, we not only can keep our church thriving and growing, 
but also we reach out to the community and we're reaching out to the ends of the earth in places like Sierra Leone to Rotafunk, the hospital that we're restoring and building there and supporting it now. But all of these activities are very, very important. And Belinda and I have always said that is important for us. But let me tell you two quick stories. The first story is this. In 1957, when we were married and we were both at the university, there was a gentleman in East Texas, a neighbor of where we were going, a neighbor of Belinda's family, because she's from East Texas, by the name of R.G. Letourneau. Probably you've heard of Mr. Letourneau. But he was born in 1988, he died in 1969, so we knew him, we knew a lot about his company in those days. Mr. Letourneau was a devout Christian. He made a pact with God, according to him, very early in his life. He quit school in the sixth grade and he started working. He started developing heavy uh, earth moving equipment. Eventually he became the number one manufacturer, developer and manufacturer of this type of uh, equipment. And he made that pact with God that I will tithe. And he started tithing, according to him, 10%. He was tithing and he, as his business grew, so did his money that he was giving to the church. And he used to have this saying, I shovel money to God, but God shovels it back more because he's got a bigger shovel. And, he, and his business continued to grow and to flourish. He was even credited with uh, one of these uh, bumper stickers that says, you know, tithe if you love Jesus. Uh, anybody can honk. He, he was a very, very influential man, not only in East Texas, but around the world. It is re reported that in the days that we knew him, he was giving 90% of his income to the church and through the church to support charities. So the second reason, the little story I would tell you, I was gifted to, uh, I was blessed to grow up in the Midwest on an Iowa farm. Times were tough back then in the farming community, but my parents, the little Methodist church we went to in the, in the small town nearby, my parents tried to give as best they could to that church. But the thing that I learned from them more than giving my, uh, of money was helping in the community. You see, in the farming community, there's always people who get sick, people who just simply can't go out and plant the crops or harvest the crops. And so the farmers would group together to help each other out. And my dad was always at the beginning of that line. I learned a great lesson from him. So those are the two stories, Mr. Letourneau and my parents. Well, Belinda and I do want to give. We always give to the church and through the church. But I will also tell you this, that in addition to giving through the church for charities, we, uh, we give directly to other charities. I've been blessed to be on the board of directors of the Methodist Home for Children and the Mission of Hope for West Africa. And uh, I know the work that they're doing and how important it is and how important it is to support their financial needs. So we, we try to do that. And it, the story goes on and on. I have four takeaways I'd like to leave with you. Personally, I give to the church because for me, it provides connectivity to God. You know, the Methodist church is built around this concept of connectivity. Our organizations, vert vertically, vertically and horizontally, all around the world are connected and they're all connected to God. And we as individuals are connected to God. And by giving generously through the church, it can increase our connectivity. I also give to the church because it gives me a sense of intimacy. As Jim Busby said, it's kind of a private thing, and it is private for us, but it does give, give me that sense of intimacy with God. And Belinda and I also feel that giving is a, is a form of worship. The fourth point that I would give, say to you is this. For both Belinda and myself, Giving is one of the ways that we can say thank you to God for his wonderful grace. It's a way that we can say thank you to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for his sacrifice on the cross that the two of us 
can look forward to life eternity, life eternal in the presence of Jesus himself. Amen.